Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, fellow YouTubers. So today I'm going to talk about uh, 3D arrays. 3D arrays are something that caused a lot of confusion for a lot of people, especially for beginner programmers. And so I got a request um, from uh, a follower that, uh, you know, he would like to hear more about 3D arrays and try to get to understand them. He also requested uh, uh, vectors of vectors or, or, or lists of lists. But I think we can get started with the arrays. And if I get enough feedback, uh, maybe I will create a, 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 another video on uh, vectors of vectors or nested vectors or whatever you want to call them or list of lists and see where their use cases are. I decided not to uh, cover that only because they lead to some other discussions and I want to cover those as well. So to be fair, I will probably be creating the video, but if you really would like to see it, uh, maybe I'll expedite it if you leave enough comments. Uh, like I said, uh, wait at the end of the video that, that I do make a mention that I'm going to have some giveaways. I'm trying to get to 1,000 followers, and I would really appreciate your help. So if you, if you want to be alerted, be sure to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and when that giveaway comes, that way it'll show up on your alerts, and it's going to be a good giveaway. I guarantee it. So let's get started. <music> Okay, so this talk is really about three-dimensional arrays, but we're going to cover some of the basics of one-dimension, two-dimension, and three-dimension arrays, because it's important to build on what you already know of uh, one-dimension and, and two-dimension in order to get into the three-dimension. Three-dimension uh, can get a little confusing. 3D arrays can, can get a little confusing, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. I really expect you to know at least uh, one dimension arrays, but if not, we'll cover them just a little bit. So 3D arrays are a concept that basically uh, lead to some confusion. And, you know, just as the name implies, they're talking about dimensions. So you can think of one dimension as a linear um, concept where it's just a line, it has no depth. Here, we it looks, appears to have depth, but it doesn't have depth. These are just blocks of, of data. So for in this example, for the one-dimensional array, we have a, a variable called values. And this example shows what values two would have. Whatever is in values two is the value. For example, there are the five there. That's the what would actually be stored in that, in that block. Now, these blocks are dependent upon the data type. You can store primitive data types, such as integer, float, double, strings, whatever. Well, strings are really objects, but... Um, that's kind of beside the point. So let's, let's just stick with the primitives, the integers, floats, doubles, and so on. So if you have an integer, 32-bit integer, this would be four bytes because four times eight is 32. So it would be 32 bits or uh, four bytes and then four bytes here and four bytes here and four bytes. If it's a double, for example, this could be eight bytes, eight, 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 and eight, which would be 64. And that's why it's important to declare the type and not only important, but required for you to declare the type when you declare an array, because that way the, the language knows how much memory to allocate and then knows how to navigate from one block of or one element to the next based on the size of that. You can also store data structures, which gets a little more complex. We're not going to cover that, but think of the same thing. Objects, this could be a full object, a full object, and all the types have to be the same. Okay, so just like the name says, we can think of dimensions as dimensions uh, for the array. In this case, single dimension. In this case, we have a two-dimensional array. And notice it has the, the width. You can think of it as width. And the height, you can think of it as X and Y. You can also think of it as columns and rows. It all depends on the context that you're um, using for your array. So, um, you know, it just depends on the context and you use whatever is best. If it's, for example, uh, uh, a, a board, you can think of it as rows and columns, like a tic-tac-toe board, for example, where you have a three by three, you can think of these as the, the rows, each one of these is a row, and then each one vertically as a column, and you would refer to it by its X and Y uh, position or row and column. Notice that I went with row, uh, and then column. And you can structure it however you want. 
you could say columns and then rows, but typically it's the, the bigger element and then the smaller element, right? So in this case, rows and columns. Um, there is another concept that when it comes to three-dimensional arrays that now you have, for example, a X and a Y and a Z, which is the depth, right? Or you can think of it in this case, this one example, you can think of the, the rows, same thing, rows, columns, right? So you have rows going up and down, columns going across, and then the depth of the sheets. In this case, we would refer to it as X, Y, and I mean Z, Y, and X. In order that we go from the biggest one to the smaller one. So we go instead now, instead of going to rows and then columns, and then we are actually saying our sheet, our, our rows, and then our columns. You can think of a two-dimensional array as something else like a cube, for example. In this example here, you can see that we have a cube. And this cube is a uh, two, we go with the Z, two by the rows, which is four, two by four by three. And I made it specifically different um, number of elements for each one of those dimensions. And so I can illustrate a point. In this example, you can see we have a variable named object, which may or may not be valid name, but we're not concerned about that. It could be anything you're dealing with. It could be a cube. It could be whatever you want to call it. And in this case, we're, when we say that, we say object one, zero, three, well, we look at the Z and that is on, on, on the Z uh, location of one. It is on the Y, then we go to the Y location of zero because that's the zero, this whole area here is zero, this one would be, this one here would be one, two, three, and four. So in this case, we go with zero for the Z and the column itself is the three. So it goes zero, one, two, and three. This is three. So it's one, zero, three. That's how we would refer to it. Now it's easy to think of it in this manner. And this is really more of a concept for us to grasp the idea of dimensions so that we can kind of map it in our heads as far as what how it works but as you'll see in another example the way that that uh the programming language breaks it down it doesn't it's just really linear block of code that gets blocked off and the way that it happens to um organize the the code or the the memory is more like a linear concept so now in this case, I'm demonstrating with I, J, and K because that's typically what we use to define. But if you think of this, this would be, in this case, uh, let me use my pencil real quick. Uh, in this case, you can think of this one as the Z. Each one of these here would be the row or the Y. And each one, and so the, all these are the Y. And these down here would be the X. Notice how it organizes it. And so if I wanted to reference to element zero, one, zero, that's this element. Element zero, uh, element, um, uh, let me see, I, I think element, oh, did I? I think I goofed this up. I think I really have this. Uh, let's see. This is J, K. I, am I missing something? Zero. I think I didn't group these correctly, but that's okay. We'll look at a, another example here in a second because I think I had this should have been uh, K0 and K1, K0 and K1 instead of the way it is. And then it would have been smaller groupings actually. But let's not, let's not worry about that. Just say, let's ignore that for that moment. But just notice that it's all linear and it begins blocking off big blocks and then into smaller groups and yet smaller groups, okay? And I'll show you an example of exactly how that works when we look at this example. And in this example, you notice that I have a three-dimensional array and I just called it 3D shape. It's a four by three by two. 
Then I took a pointer just to get a pointer to the starting point of that array. And what I did is I did a for loop i, j, k. So if you think of it like if this was z and y and then x. And I just assign a linear value, which is I called it L. And this is just uh, a number that's going to go uh, and I, I put a number to each one of those values in the three-dimensional array. Down here, I take and using, instead of using the three-dimensional array, I use the linear and it's just going to, it's going to go one block or one element at a time walking down and you'll see that it goes linear um, in that order and notice what it does. Notice that when I print it out linearly, it ends up breaking everything down, zero, one, two, three, it's in perfect sequential order. So what ha what's happening here is that in, a, in the case of uh, K, we have two elements, zero and one. This is our K, right? But this, is, this also has another part of the address that has the, the Z and the Y, it would be Z zero, right? Z zero, and then it would be Y zero, and then this would be K zero and K one. Then it moves over to, uh, this is still K zero, I mean, not K zero, X zero. This would be X zero and X one, X zero and X one, X zero and X one. But what makes them different from each other is that they have a different Y so for example, this would be y0, y1, uh, we have, and then y2, since we have three dimensions, and then again, y0, y1, y2, but each of these groups of blocks of six, it would actually go into, uh, it would actually capture four since we have four of them. So we, it would be these three would be, for example, um, it would be Z zero, the, all of these would be composed of Z zero. So if we go back to our example, if we go back to our example here, we can then find any location at a given uh, a location in our dimension our, our three-dimensional array. If we wanted to find what this one was, well, we gotta begin with the Z. We know that this first, this first piece, and let me use the pencil, and let me use red. We know that this piece here, this whole um, square or rectangle, whatever you wanna call it, this first part is Z zero. Now we wanna go to the Y, let's say we wanted to find this one, well, we know the y is one, so it'd be zero, one, and then we gotta find the column. The column is two, or the x is two, so it'd be zero, one, two. So uh, just a, a couple of things to recap. We can do this and, and declare our, our dimensions. Notice, no, no, one thing to note is that in C++, um, everything's uninitialized, so you have to initialize it. This is a good way to initialize it. You go from your highest to your lowest. You go from your Z, then your Y, then your X, except I'm from I, J, and K. And then you can initialize them all to zero if you wanted to. I initialize them to an actual number, so that way we could see what it does linearly. And linearly, it stores the memory. It doesn't care. It just, it's just kind of a way for us to mentally map it. Technically, you could do your own breakdown and just say, you know what, I just want a single dimensional array, I'll break it down. And I've seen people do that for speed and convenience and all of that and just create a single dimension linear. Uh, that way they can write all the bytes out at once instead of doing a bunch of loops, So you, which you can do. So hopefully that helps. Um, if we had a single dimensional array, we could say call it values, for example, and have three, this would have values zero, one, and two. If we had a two dimensional array, we could say values three and two or whatever size we needed. And, but of course it can't have the same name, the same values one. And this would be at three by two. Uh, you can think of it as a table. 
that is three high and two wide. So um, I don't think there's much else to say. Now, the one thing is that you can have pointers, arrays of pointers. And then in that case, if you have an array of pointers, because sometimes you may not know the how deep they need to be and they need to be um, dynamically created. And so in that, in that case, then you would have an array of pointers or, you know, in this case, for example, this can be replaced with this, uh, where it was the values, we'll say values P just for, and then we could say something like equals new int three. And in this case, we could have int pointer to pointer of values one P. And in this case, we have to do different allocations. We'd have to do a for loop for the initial array for the first dimension, and then an inner loop for the second dimension. And you can see where it would get into the same thing for the three dimensional. It would be actually three uh, locations of pointers, and it's pointers of pointers. Or you could have in a, a, you know, uh, an, an array of pointers too, because you can have an array of pointers where you have int like in the case of, uh, I think we have something in, in uh, C where we have a, a char pointer args or arg v, and we have three. And in this case, the reason for that is that we have three arrays, right? We have three arrays of pointers to what this could be uh, basically C type strings. I hope this made sense. Um, if you have any questions, drop your questions below. Please like my video. Um, it really helps me. I'm trying to reach uh, I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers and some at some point I'm gonna have some giveaways to try to reach that 1,000 goal. And right now I'm still thinking about what I'm gonna give away. You know, it's gonna be something good. And it just gotta be ready because if you subscribe and you get the notifications, that way when you get the notification, you'll get the notification that the, the time is coming, it's, it's nearing down, and I'm going to announce what I'm going to give away. And it's gonna be something good. It might be one or two things. I'm not, I'm not certain on what it is, and I'm not certain on how many things. It could be three, who knows? But if you subscribe and you set your alerts to be notified, then you'll be ready, and you'll be ready to enter that, that giveaway. So please give it a thumbs up. Give it a two thumbs down if you don't like it, and uh, please remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching.